Phelan Parkway. That's where I'm at. This is where you, this is a little staging area for the pipes. I see the stoplight, stoplight back there. But I pulled all the way up because when I wake up in the morning, I probably have about about three more PNS trucks right there. I'm, I'm usually always the first one here. Every time, never fails. I'm always the first one here. Hey, so that should tell y'all something. Forgot your bag and it's empty. Yep, sleep right here, 10 hour break. Wake up in the morning. I wake up in the morning about 6.30. Go ahead and put my clothes on. And we'll just wait for the guys to come get me. They'll come knock on the door. And then you have to pull down here somewhere. They'll direct you. So mainly just this is just where the mainly just where we come stage at. So I'm about to get something to eat, gang. We'll see what they're gonna do in the morning. Here we go, gang. Here we go. You see that truck in front of me? That's the truck. That's the guy. Ah, oh, shit. Woke up this morning at 26 degrees. Damn, it's cold outside. Gotta hear your kitchen, guy. Yeah. Like a left and a right. Go down to Williams Bridge. All right, now. I better slow down on it. I know y'all got a stop sign. My first rodeo game, y'all was wondering. Say my first rodeo. This probably this probably is like New York Low 28. <laughs> I've done a lot of them. A lot of people don't want to come to New York. I don't mind, I don't mind, I don't this one ain't that bad. Cause you got you got this guy that, that uh you got this guy that fought that that pretty much guides you in there. But the one that goes to uh, Brooklyn, I'll never do that one again. Never. Unless, unless it pays about six thousand, six, seven thousand dollars. I might do it then. Last last week when I was up here, it was uh I was the first truck here again. But they had to unload the other two pipes first because the numbers that was on the pipes. I'm the first one again now, so hopefully I don't have to wait. Cause last time I had to, last time I had to wait like another hour and a half before I got unloaded. Okay, we're gonna stop right up here. This is where we're gonna stop. I see the guy over there.
usually around this time, you had the guys come out and stop the traffic. So I'm gonna just sit here and wait. See the guys over there. He stopped the traffic on the other side. You know how I know who you know you know how I know who it is. But they got on yellow coats. <laughs> Just like me when I about to get out and put mine on. waving me up. Let's make this right turn. You ain't going to make it with the parking brake set. Let's make this right turn. Let's make this right turn. Here we go. Here we go, gang. There he is. See that guy up there? See him stopping traffic for me. That's how they do. That guy smoking a cigarette. And it's freezing cold outside. Ooh, it's tight, baby. It's tight. It's tight. It's tight. We got it. We got it, gang. Ooh, it's tight. I can't make it. They got to move those cones back there. <laughs> Moving some stuff around behind me. Yeah, ain't no way you could have made that turn. I got a bunch of cones, a bunch of damn wood and stuff. Move that shit. <laughs> Had to close the mirror. That shit is tight. They got something on this side, they gotta move out of the way. Finally got up out of that damn hole. They used the forklift, peeked up the back end of my trailer and swung it around.
now, now we got that out of the way, the next step will be to get up out of here. Get out. We got to make one of these right turns up here coming up. All right, buddy. We're going to go. What's up, man? Two. Two trailers? Yeah, it's another trailer behind me. It's a tight fucking intersection. Yeah, it is, man. Too tight. <laughs> uh, yeah, pull up to the end of the last pipe. So All right, thank you. Yeah. Pull up to the end of the last pipe. Guess what? I got I got uh I got most of the straps off last night, so I don't got many straps to use. Got to open my damn passenger mirror. Up. See, I'm getting unloaded on the damn street. Alright gang, we out of here. Yeah. My GPS telling me to turn on Holland Avenue. But I know from experience, you can't turn on Holland Avenue. Because Holland Avenue has too many cars lined up on the side of the street. You can't make the turn. And if you if you go past Holland Avenue, you'll end up at a damn uh, a bridge that's 12-2, straight down this road. So I can't make this turn right here. The guy was telling me to make this one. But it looks too tight. I'm about to look at it. I don't know. I might can make this one. I think I will take this one right here. Yeah, I will take this one. Yeah. All you all you basically gotta do is just make a make a circle around the block and it'll put you back on the freeway. Five hundred feet. Turn right on Master Avenue. You see now my GPS. Now my GPS caught back up with me. Yeah, that's basically all we're doing. Just my, just circling the block. Watch out for pedestrians. Watch out for the. School buses. See, we got a lot of them. I'm gonna let this truck go ahead so I can go out real wide. Look like here on the phone. What you gonna do, buddy? Go ahead, go ahead and make that turn, buddy. We're waiting on you. Pedestrians go. Here we go. Here we go, buddy. Here we go. Getting all up out of here. Here we go, gang. Here we go. In 1,000 feet, turn right on Williams Bridge Road. William Bridge Road coming right up.
hey, hey, y'all just got a little taste of what happens in New York. It's just a little taste. It ain't always like this. My DM sent me a message head to New Jersey. So we're going to go ahead and head to New Jersey. Hopefully, we're going to get a load out of Camden. Hopefully. Last week when I was up here, I had to go all the way to Wilmington, Delaware, because Camden was closed. For some reason, they were closed in the middle of the week. In 600 feet, turn right on Williamsbridge Road. <sighs> yeah, hopefully we get that load out of Camden, we'll be good. So next time I come back up here, Damn, I'm catching every damn red light. I'm catching every damn red light. Next time I come up here, if I know I gotta make that right turn again to get in that that little service street, I'm gonna have to go extra wide, wider than I went that time. I don't know if y'all can see that bus to my right, but you gotta watch out for those buses too, cause they be stopping on the corners, and they they stop without warning. Like, so you, you always got to keep an eye on your trailer while you're making them turns. You see, he just moved out the way. Look, pedestrian. As soon as I get ready to make the right turn, got a pedestrian. Look at her. Got you, buddy. Got you. back where we started. The stop sign right here. That's that service road where they're doing the work at. New York is a beautiful city. I remember I used to work with a guy some years ago. He was from New York. He used to always talk about the city so beautiful they had to name it twice. New York, New York. He used to always say that. The city so beautiful they had to name it twice. Yeah, that's why I just had to make the right turn there right here. Alrighty, gang. Alrighty then. Catch y'all a little, little later on the flip side. Hey, I just thought about something random real quick, man. I got a load of steel back there. I picked up out of Camden Yards. I just thought about something random, like why, why do? We we'll go over here. Hey, why do why do truck drivers like why why do we just like automatically we just like automatically hate each hate each other <laughs> like we don't even we don't even know the other trucker in the other truck and yeah, we just we like fuck you bitch get that slow ass truck out of the way like come on motherfucker move that shit like I was just pulling up to the fuel island just now and it was another truck taking his damn time I was like motherfucker get the fuck out the way I'm like and I just thought like. I just thought like we don't we don't even know each other man. This guy don't even fucking know me. I don't know who he is. <laughs> I don't know where the situation is or anything. I don't know how his kids are doing in school or maybe maybe if his kid is has cancer or anything. Like he don't know me. Like maybe I maybe something could be wrong with me. I don't know. But I'm like we, but but we as truck drivers, we just automatically talk shit to each other. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny. It's kind of, it's kind of comical, but but then it, it kind of ain't. But you know, just some little random shit I just thought about. Whew, checking these straps while I'm while I'm uh 
getting my fuel. Now I'm about to run in here and grab some coffee. Check my tires, knock on them a little bit. You know how we do. Do my pre-trip. I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm at the truck stop. I pulled up to the fuel island. Then I did a pre-trip. <laughs> I logged the pre-trip while I'm getting this damn fuel. I don't know, I don't know how y'all do it. Now, I'm about to grab my damn coffee cup. Woo! About to grab this coffee cup real quick. Go ahead and get some coffee. Clock's still running. <laughs> Logging the pre-trip. Let's go get some coffee. First, I'm gonna pull my truck up. I don't wanna be that guy. It was a truck in front of me. Pull my truck up. We don't wanna be that guy that takes us down. You know how y'all be talking shit about taking 30 minute breaks at the, at the fuel island and shit. You know how y'all be talking shit. I don't hardly take 30 breaks of fuel. I don't take really take 30 minute breaks of fuel islands. <clears throat> you know why? Oh, oh, excuse that mess. I don't, I don't, y'all know I go home a lot. So what I do at night, I just, uh, my laundry bags, I throw all that stuff on the passenger seat. Then when I start back driving, I throw it all back on the bed. That's how I do. But yeah, I was, what I was about to say was, I don't take my 30 minute breaks of fuel islands, cause most of the time I take my 30 minute breaks while I'm sitting at a damn ship or a receiver. Most of the time. <clears throat> Very rarely do I take like a real 30 minute break like some of y'all drivers that Maybe you gotta drive like a, a 1,500 mile run, you know, where you just gonna be driving all day. So you gotta take a 30 minute break. You gotta pull over somewhere and take a 30 minute break. But my, my runs are really, I haven't, I haven't ran a, a, a I have not ran a, a, a run over like, I wanna say six, 600 miles. Yeah, I haven't ran over 600 miles in, in one day. I haven't, haven't done it. Yeah, I just... I did take a 30-minute break when I was going to the Bronx uh, the other day. I stopped at a, at a pilot right there in uh, Northern Maryland. I stopped at a pilot, got me a sub. I ain't need no fuel because I already filled up in Virginia where the fuel was cheap at, like where it is right now. And this uh, fine Jake. Exit 104, Virginia, Ruthless Glen, Virginia. It's real cheap right here. It's one of the best spots to get fuel. That's why it's always packed. <sighs> Go inside this damn pallet. Well, it's actually not a pallet. It's a flying J. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Cinnabon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Your Sunday. Let me show y'all something. This message popped up while I was inside the truck stop. Dion, that's not it. Dion, what is your ETA to deliver? 7.14 a.m. Hey, they ready for me. Let me hit the road, D. Let's get it. Hey, what's going on? West of Salem, North Carolina. Y'all remember when I was getting my coffee this morning? I got a message. I was saying my DM had sent me a message about what's my ETA. I'll tell you the reason why. My 10 hour break wasn't up until 7 o'clock this morning. But this load 
had an appointment time for 7 a.m. So that's why she asked my ETA. You want to know why? When I got empty in uh, Bronx yesterday, I had to go to camp. I had to go ahead. Take exit 113, Patterson Avenue. Yeah, I had to dead hit the Camden. That's about a hundred, it's about a hundred and twenty mile dead head. So I got to Camden and I left out of the Bronx about 7.30. I got to Camden about 10.30. I made one stop, got some coffee, and I went ahead to Camden. Okay, so the load, this load was due, I got to Camden at 10.30. This load was due in Winston-Salem at 7 a.m. Okay, I got the camera at 10.30. Guess what time I got loaded? 4 o'clock. So I sat at camera yesterday for probably about, about 5, 6 hours. Just to get loaded. So that's what took so long. So by the time I left Camden, I had about, I want to say I had about 5 hours, maybe like 5 and a half hours left on my clock. So I, I made it all the way down to Virginia, uh, Rupert's Glen, exit 104. Hear that GPS saying speed warning? I ain't even going that fast. I ain't even going that fast. I'm going, I'm going 55. Exit 113, Avenue and then turn left in 0.3 miles. In 900 feet, TIG, exit 113, Patterson Avenue, and then turn left in 0.3 miles. You hear how much that GPS talks? That's why I love it. You can't go wrong with that Raminati. She always talks. Tells me every little thing to do. Hey, a lot of y'all old truckers. Y'all still don't? Still don't like technology. Come on, Jake, break, break me down, baby, break me down, Jakey, Jakey, breaky, break me all down. I had a guy just commented yesterday. He was talking about he don't like the automatics. Talking about uh, technology will fail. The Jake break ain't good in the automatic. He like the manual better. Talking about technology will fail. Hey. Well, I don't I, I I can't be the judge of that. Speed limit reduced to head. Speed limit reduced to head. I see the sign right there says 35. But my GPS though she gotta tell me anyway. Let's look for this place. I know we ain't going to advanced auto parts. In a half mile, turn right on. Half mile turn right, perimeter point boulevard. Perimeter point boulevard, where you at, baby? We ain't got there yet. Dylan, Dylan wants to say, we're almost there. Where you at, perimeter point boulevard? Turn right on Hamilton Point Boulevard and then approaching destination on the right side in 100 feet. I see you, baby. Approaching destination on the right side in 100 feet. Let's make this right turn. Get on up in here. Perimeter Point Boulevard. You have arrived at your destination. Baby, get on up. I'm about to stop real quick, middle of this road, and check the name of this place. I technically I should know where the hell I'm going, but a lot of times I forget the name of the actual business that I'm going to. Let's see. Okay, Dylan Supply. 
Dealer Supply. Where you at, baby? They go ABC Supply right there. You have arrived at your destination on the right side. There we go. Perimeter Point Boulevard. You see where the truck entrance is at. Okay, there it is. Truck entrance. Truck entrance. Steel warehouse. Industrial warehouse. Truck entrance. Get on up in here, baby. Get on up in here. Then I gotta make a lift. Get on down here. Could have came in that other driveway, too. Let's get on around here. Oh, okay. I see. Enter. Y'all can't see it yet. Woo! Enter. Look at all this gang stuff on this thing. Blood gang. What the hell? All right. Let's get this top off. Out this bitch. If I could get out, got a lot of traffic on this little street. Let's get on up out of here, baby. Hey, y'all, y'all know something that I just thought about? Cause when I just pulled up in that place while ago, they had the blood, they had the blood game stuff up there, painted on the wall. And I just remember looking at my load notes, and I'ma show y'all when I stop. I'ma show y'all on the load notes what it says. It says uh, overnight. It says you are available to park overnight in this area, but uh, it's it's not safe. So basically, parking at your own risk. It says that in my load notes. <laughs> I'm gonna show y'all when I get to, when I stop. Next time I stop, I'll be at the house. I'm two and a half hours away from home right now. Man, this is a blind turn. I can't see what's coming on my right side. I know I got it on my left. Oh, that's a blind turn right there. They're gonna, they need to cut them trees down. Yeah, back on the highway, baby. Back on the highway. 52 North. North Carolina 8 South. 5 miles. 
Well, not five miles, half a mile, point five. So according to my maps, I will be home at 2.41 p.m. That's what it says on the map. 2.41 p.m. In a quarter mile, take the entrance to the left on US 52 South and C8 South. Y'all heard my GPS. That's my best friend. You see the police up there on the left? Got somebody pulled over. They arguing too. The police officer talking some junk. Yeah, he talking some shit. I see him over there. Got about three guys standing there with hoodies on. The police officer just waving his hands. Yeah, somebody's in trouble. Won't want to be them people. I'm pretty sure you know we all had little issues when we were when we were young with the police. I was about to go in there, but I couldn't. that car had so much speed going, so I didn't know if they were going to make the right turn or what. Look, another police going to the scene. Oh, hell. Yeah, they about to go to jail. <laughs> yeah, they're going to jail. It was already two cars. Now the third one pulling up. Yeah, they're going to jail. One thing y'all know about dealing with police. Ah oh, man, and they got an ambulance. The ambulance just passed me. As soon as they just passed me, they just cut the lights on. Me. Yeah, so it might have been a wreck. But one thing, I, one thing I know, and y'all know too, if you get pulled over by the police, when 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 you see about two, three more cars pulling up, you're in trouble. <laughs> hey, because you know, you get pulled over by one cop, he run your name and your registration, or whatever. If, if everything good and you ain't did nothing wrong, you know, you ain't got nothing to worry about. But when you see them other cars pull up, he done called for backup. Continue on this road for six miles. <laughs> hey, I ain't about that life, man. I'm just a hard working man, hard working truck driver. All I want to do is work, go home, what I'm doing right now. All right, today is Friday, January 31st. Tomorrow is my birthday. I will be 34 years old. If I never told y'all, mostly I tell people that I'm 24, but I will be 34, actually. But if anybody asks, say I'm 24. There's a Blue Max flatbed right there. They're based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Blue Max. If anybody want to check them out, hey, I saw a company today I never seen before. They had a, it was an orange, it was an orange flatbed with a step deck called AXT Transportation. Never heard of them. I seen them today. I looked them up already. They got a terminal in Raleigh. I never heard of that company. Have y'all heard of? Them? Cause I never heard of. Them. Yeah, but that was a Blue Max flatbed that just going that other way. They got those uh those Mack trucks. I don't want to talk y'all heads off today, man. So I'm gonna wrap this one up. We can get about eight minutes wrapped up. Speed one. You heard my GPS. Speed limit is 55. I'm going 58. As you can see, the other cars and trucks are still passing me. Woo! Ready to get to the house, man. First thing I'm gonna do when I get home today, I'm gonna go get me a haircut, get me a couple Bud Lights, and we're gonna get ready for this Super Bowl weekend. I already, I already told y'all I was going for the 49ers, so all you Kansas City fans. And you know, it's kind of hard for, it's kind of hard for me to pick a side on this, man. Because I like Kansas City, too. They're not my team, but I do like them. But my buddy, my buddy Zach, that I used to work with, he, he's been a 49er fan for about 20 years. And he ain't never switched up. So I'm going to just, I'm going to root for him. Hey, I want to take a moment of silence on my buddy Aaron. He's down in Birmingham right now. He just got some bad news. Apparently his receiver closes at 11 o'clock on Fridays. 
Hey, he gonna he gonna he gonna call me back in a little bit. Let me know the outcome. But he, yeah, they closed eleven o'clock, and he ain't gonna be there till twelve. Speed warning. So he might be. He's about three hundred miles from his house. So he was asking me what would I do? Would I stay stay in the area and just deliver it on Monday, or would I go home and come back? I said, brother, I really couldn't tell you what I would do in that situation. But I said the best thing you can do is would be to just uh, stay down there, cause you're gonna uh, deadhead 300 miles home. Well, not actually deadhead, cause you got a load, but you're gonna drive 300 miles home and then gotta drive 300 miles back. I said sometimes you know you might just have to enjoy the, enjoy a new city. That's how that's how most of y'all OTR truckers do. But well, you know PNS, they got us spoiled. We go home every weekend. <laughs> so, hey, so hey, I said, look, man, it's up to you. But I said the best thing to do would be to just stay down there and drop it off on Monday. Hey, that's trucking, as y'all like to say. Yeah, that's probably what I would do. I tell my girl, I'd be like, look. Some shit happened. They got they got the delivery dates. They got the, the delivery schedule mixed up. But I ain't gonna make it home. That would be the best bet. There's my exit right here. Yeah, we going to the house, baby. We going to the house. Woo! Flatbed gang, I love y'all, man. Make sure y'all tell me happy birthday tomorrow. Hey, I don't want I don't want nobody to get in trouble on the weekend. I know y'all gonna be watching the Super Bowl. Don't don't drink and drive. Don't don't drink and then drive either. If you're gonna drink, get yourself an Uber or a Lyft. Call you a taxi. Call one of your buddies up. Especially, hey, don't drink and drive, man. Don't do it. I got a buddy. One of my other buddies back home. He got a DUI. A couple, he got a DUI about five years ago. And even though he got it, even though he had to end up paying the lawyer about $8,000, he got it dropped down. The lawyer got it dropped down to a uh, reckless driving. And even though it was, even though he got it dropped down to a reckless driving, he still had to wait three years before he got his CDLs. So them three years that he didn't have CDLs, he just had working little little off and on jobs and stuff like that. As soon as those three years was up, he went and got his CDLs back. And now, now he's back on his feet. So if anybody can tell you, my, my buddy can tell you, it ain't, it ain't worth losing your CDLs, man. Don't drink and drive. I, I had a bad habit of doing that back when I was young, drinking and driving. And I never, I never got a ticket. I had some close calls. I had some breathalyzers. I remember one time I blew a .03. And in North Carolina, the legal limit is .08. Well, you know, some states got different limits. Some states like Georgia got zero tolerance. I could be wrong about that, but I think, I think I'm right. And there may be some other states that got zero tolerance as well. So you can't blow nothing. But that time I blew that .03, they told me I had to drive straight home because I was only about five miles from the house. They told me to drive straight home and don't get back on the road or they were going to lock me up. So they, 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 I dodged the bullet with that one. But yeah, man, don't drink and drive, man. Super Bowl weekend. Drink, hey, drink at the house. Chill out. Y'all going to call out of work Monday. Go ahead and call out of work. But you know, sometimes, I remember a couple years ago, one time, I went to a Super Bowl party. Matter of fact, when, when Philadelphia beat New England, I went to a Super Bowl party. I didn't end up getting home until about 3 in the morning, and I had to get up at 5.30 to go to work. And when I woke up, I was still kind of drunk, so I had to end up calling out of work. So, hey, you don't want to go to work drunk either. Go to work smelling like alcohol. Somebody get a whiff of it. This one I worked at the factory. Go to work, smell like alcohol, they send you to the nurse. Hey, you might lose your job. Don't drink and drive, don't drink and go to work either. Dude. 
Alright, gang, I've been running my mouth long enough. Catch y'all on the flip side. I'm out.